Apple is down. A ripple effect on the NASDAQ today. Let's talk to Rob Zirin. Zirin. Hey. Zirin. <laughs> Zirin, yes. Yes, of Reuters Breaking Views. All right, this out of the Nikkei, mm -hmm. uh, out of Apple. They're cutting their orders, really having them for the LCD screens, lots of parts. They're telling the suppli suppliers, hey, not so much. Well, they, this, this has been going, I mean, the stories have been leaking out over the past several weeks that, um, okay, demand isn't going to be everything that Apple expected. Ah, panic, everyone's <laughs> panicking. Right. And uh, everyone's overreacting a bit, I think. Panicking yeah. to the tune of the stock went below 500 for mm -hmm. the first time in 11 months in the pre-market, now at about 505, down about 3%. Yeah, I mean, investors, you know, they have to, they, of course they take this seriously because China's been the biggest source of growth for Apple, okay? And the iPhone is their most profitable product. Over half their products come from the iPhone. Yeah. So if that happens, everyone's like, uh oh, you know, if the biggest market for our biggest profit, you know, engine is suddenly stalls, what's that mean? But they're also they're taking it a bit too hard. Because if you think of it, Apple is still probably gonna grow. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna grow actually pretty fast. Because Apple's got three sources of growth. They've got China, right. they've got the fact that everyone's starting to use smartphones, even your grandma's probably got a smartphone, right. or, you, or you know, your mom, whatever. She's gone now, thanks. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then and there's also the corporate market, because um, you know, I've got a PC at my desk, and I'd rather have an Apple, and eventually the higher-ups will eventually take notice, perhaps, and give me a PC, <laughs> give me an Apple. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, so so China is probably slowing down, and that's that's something. But then again, you know, in two in they, they seem to have talks with China Mobile, which the biggest smartphone uh, Huge. Uh, market in the world. Uh, so it looks like with Tim Cook just having come back from China that there's possibly a deal that they've been working on it for a long time, like four years yeah, to lock and, up and China it could, Mobile. It could be, you know, next week, uh, I mean, two weeks from now, Apple or Apple earnings will come out. And if there's going to be an announcement, that's probably the time they would announce it. Um, so there, there's still some things out there that could provide Apple with some growth. And so, um, you know, don't get too upset about one. So you don't think they have to rush to make a phablet or make a cheaper smartphone like they were talking about possibly to introduce in China? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a word. Because the, well, the thing, thing about Apple, okay, they're already working on these things anyway. Yeah. They, they don't panic and just suddenly work on a new product over the space of a week. They develop things over, you know, over months and months, if not years. They've been working on TV for several years. That's probably that's getting right. close to fruition, so that, that's the type of thing that will be announced this year. All and right. they've also been working on cheaper phones and bigger phones, so that that will come out. All right, Rob, thanks so much for your insight. We're going to do a little guest shuffle now. And Rob's going to leave us, and Ernie Scheider is going to come in. Ernie, and we're going to talk us some auto show, because we've seen strong sales, and it continues to roll on, so to speak. <laughs> GM's global sales rose almost 3%. Great demand for the Chevy. Not only here, but big uptick in China. Yes, really strong uh, results for GM for all of last year. And this shows that the auto industry is rebounding, especially GM, one of the largest global leaders. Um, especially important is the China jump, because as the middle class in China grows, more people want cars. Right. And uh, GM is the largest player in the Chinese car market, so this is just nothing but positive for them. All right, Treasury's getting out, so they're no longer really going to be government motors. No more government motors, And indeed. they've got the new uh, uh, Corvette uh, out there, Chevy does. Uh, Are you going to buy one? Yeah, as if. Okay. One day. <laughs> one day, one day. A girl can dream, can't she? <laughs> uh, we've got Rhonda Schaffler and uh, Paul Ingracia, our deputy editor of Chief, Chief and Big Pulitzer Prize winning car guru that are out at the auto show. And Rhonda's going to be talking to Ford CEO Alan Mulally. We also caught up with Mercedes Benz's Dr. Z, and he thinks the good times are going to keep rolling on in terms of sales there. So take a listen. Last year, for the first time, we sold more cars in the U.S. than in any other market. And therefore, of course, uh, the U.S. market is the number one market. Uh, and uh, we put a lot of focus and emphasis with our great new products being launched in this market. So Mercedes had a record year in 2012. Not as great as BMW, but still a record year for them. And he says more good times ahead. Yeah, I mean, this shows, you know, if people are spending on sort of cheaper end cars like GMs and expensive cars like Mercedes, I think this really shows kind of the broader optimism in the auto industry. And you really see that reflected in the Detroit show. You know, the past few years it's been on life support, but more and more people are looking to the auto industry now, buying cars, and they're saying, what will the car be like in five or ten years? So that's yeah. a positive development. All right, let's put it to the middle and go to the hot spot. And as we do, remember those snaps at the bottom of your screen. For more headlines of the day, some stocks that are moving today. Facebook upgraded to buy by Deutsche Bank from 22 to 40 bucks, 24 to 40 bucks. 
stock was up earlier, but it's taken a bit of a dip down about a percent and a half. Now. Yeah, there's some concern out there that people are saying that Facebook is seeing more users on mobile than it is on traditional PCs, and they're getting a little antsy about that, despite the upgrade today to 40, which let's not forget is above the IPO price. Yeah. Um, I think some of these concerns are a little, though, short sighted because you want Facebook to get more of its revenue for mobile because why? Right. Because more people are going on mobile, you know. Right. We were talking about phablets earlier, you know, that sort of is one of the futures of mobile computing, more people looking at websites on there. So if more people are going to be using Facebook on mobile and Facebook find a way to get more revenue from them, that's only going to help them in the long term. All right. Well, they like the mobile advertising over at Deutsche Bank there, too. And, and, and the ads that come through the news feed as more and more uh, are going to be that's introduced big bucks, that way. You know? and, and with video as well. Let's take a look at the Zuculator while we're on Facebook. <laughs> what do you say? 15.6. I think you can definitely buy a Corvette. I think that's a new high from uh, when I, well, since I've been doing this show. Should we celebrate? He can buy. <laughs> he's fine, dude. He can buy a new Corvette, and you know what else he can buy? He can buy him some Harry Winston jewels if he hasn't already for his wife. Oh, she's she a lucky lady. Get, she's like uh, Harry Winston. Last night's Golden Globes. If you look there, she had Jessica Alba. She wore Harry Winston. But do you think next year she'll be saying? I'm wearing Swatch <laughs> because now Swatch. They pay her enough. Swatch bought Harry Winston, reported out of the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, this is this is a great move for Swatch because they diversify outside of kind of mainline watches. You know, they are the world's largest watchmaker. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Yeah. But with Harry Winston, they get kind of a very niche brand that has a lot of high visibility, as you say, at the Golden Globes. And you know, they're um, helping out Harry Winston, which is going to change its name to focus more really on kind of the mining aspect of getting these diamonds out of the ground. So it's a win-win for both companies. Definitely. And you know who else can buy Harry Winston? I'm sure he's bought lots already. Carl Icahn. <laughs> and he's also bought into the oil rigging company, yes. Transocean, which of course yep. was embroiled in the uh, BP oil spill and just settled big with the government. Six or nine of its workers were killed in that accident. Yeah, very, um, you know, very low point for the company. And a lot of people try to write, up, try to change, write off Transocean or say that it's not going to basically become, come back. Carl Icahn sees a lot of potential here, obviously, and he's got a long track record of going into companies he thinks are undervalued. Um, the world demand for oil is not going anywhere. It's only going to continue to increase, especially offshore. And this is what Transocean does really, really well. So if Carl Icahn's getting into the name, you can bet he's going to try to squeeze more efficiencies and boost profit. All right, Ernie, thank you so much. Remember, everybody, follow us on Twitter at Reuters Insider. Check out our YouTube channel, Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard, and this is Reuters.